was Na and Cl. So Na has an uh, electron decay of 0.9, and chlorine is 3.0. 0.9. So the difference there is 2.1. So, so that's an ionic compound. I have a question for you. Yeah. What if it's exactly 0.4? Well, that's a tricky question because a lot of people think it's got to be some hard and fast box. And the reality is, it's, kind of is it's, it's a mushy system. And yeah. 0.4 is sort of ish. And it's really more of a, it's a continuum. Yeah. The, as you go across this, you get more and more ionic yeah. or more and more polar. And so it's not like it's just either or. So it doesn't fit in a box in that yeah. sense. It's more of a continuum, we would call it. Yep. So that's kind of a good question there, Mr. Sams. All right. Now, um, there's polar bonds where the electronegativity is less than 2.1 mm -hmm. and greater than 0.4. And there's also a polar molecule. molecule. Now, to be a molecule be polar, you must have two things. The bond, the bond must be polar. polar. Yeah. If you have a nonpolar bond, you cannot have a polar molecule. But you also have the shape must not cancel out cancel out and we're going to learn more about shapes in a subsequent podcast yep. so but let's kind of get that on the table here for you for you guys to go that um i guess we should do that now yeah. i thought yeah all right so um polar molecules so examples of some polar molecules the classic example is water h o h and i'm not gonna i'll tell you the shapes when we do the shape uh, discussion a little bit later but water has this bent shape yeah and um, O has a value, oxygen. Let's go 3. back. 3.4? 3.5. 3 3.5. So this number here is 3.5. And each of these were 2.1, if you recall. And the difference there is... Um, 1.4. 1.4. So that makes it a polar bond. Yep. And because of the shape, it's going to cause this to um, be polar. Meaning I put the positive... Um, actually, what you do is you try and find the center, the geometric center of positive and negative charge. Since the O is more electronegative, it gets a slightly negative charge. Mm -hmm. The hydrogen is slightly positive. And you ask yourself, where's the center of negative charge? That's it would be on the oxygen because, of course, that's the only thing that has negative charge. So this is negative. The geometric center of positive charge is right here in the middle. And guess what? I got a positive here and a negative here. I've made a little magnet, haven't I? Yep, a little dipole yeah, moment. A little dipole moment, we would say. Yeah. Uh, another example of a. Yeah. Oh, actually, hey, look at that. Yeah, I actually had a chart. <laughs> uh, here. Picture. Picture much better than my little sketch. But you can get the idea. The geometric center is right here for positive and negative here. And notice I have the dipole moment. Actually, notice how the charge is drawn this way. All right. Now, here would be another example here, ammonia, NH3. Ammonia has a, a pyramidal shape, and these are the positive ends, if you look. And then if you go right in the center, this is where the center of positive is, and the center of negative charge would be right on the nitrogen, because it's and negative. And notice that are those in the same place? The, is the positive and the negative in the same place? Oh, no. So this makes this a little dipole. And then they draw it this way with the little red arrow thing you can see. Now we have a different ballgame with carbon dioxide. See, we have slightly negative and slightly negative, and this is two slightly positives. So where is the center of positive and negative charge? They're actually both on the same place. Yeah. This is positive and negative, and that makes them cancel out. And that makes this nonpolar or not polar right here. Okay? That's not an important screen. All right. We should talk about ions and We size. should, yeah. Okay, last topic here. Because it all matters. Yeah. All right, ions have different... Uh, yes, different sizes than the atom that it came from. So, if I have an atom... We talked about this a little bit in the last lesson. Yeah, if you've got an atom... This like is the babysitter and kid thing. Sodium, and then I become a sodium ion. Turns out this size of the sodium positive one is smaller. Yep. And so this is actually an example of a cations. Cations are ions with a positive charge. Cations of the same element are smaller. Smaller. Because there's more positives on the, in the nucleus than there are negatives outside, so it pulls them in. And anions of the same element are larger. Larger. Because in this case, there's more negatives on the outside than there is positive in the nucleus, so they're spread out further. So let's say I have nitrogen, and then I have the ion of nitrogen that's most common is the nitride ion. It would be much bigger. So in this case, you've got you know your analogy with the babysitters. Yeah. A nitrogen has seven, seven protons. protons, and then you would have ten electrons. So you've got yeah. seven babysitters trying to hold on to ten, ten kids. kids, and that's a lot harder than seven and seven. Yep. 
So that's how you can uh, know that. And there's actually a chart. Draw pictures. We did this. Okay. And um, here's a chart here. This is the size of the lithium ion mm -hmm. and the beryllium positive 2, O negative 2. So these, the O's would be like small. And for the lithium atom, he would be much bigger than the lithium ion. So the purple ones are bigger than expected. No. Yeah. The purple ones are smaller than expected. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You're right. And the orange ones, as pictured, are larger than expected. What's the next slide? You know, an important word, folks, that's not in your handout that you should add is this word. Everybody write this word. Isoelectronic. Sounds like a some fancy electronic part in your computer, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. But it's not. No. ISO means same. Electronic means electrons. So we have the same number of electrons. OK. So a, a way to look at this is if I've got a sodium ion, it has how many electrons? So it no has 10 electrons. How did you get that? Well, the sodium atom has 11, and the plus 1 charge means it lost 1. So it has 10. All right. What if I have magnesium? plus 2. Um, well, it normally has 12, and it lost 2, so it also has 10. Oh, same number. That's it pretty is. interesting. Yeah. What about, say, the uh, fluoride ion? OK, it normally has 9, and it got an extra one for the negative charge, so it has 10. I'm thinking we're seeing a pattern here. I do. What about um, uh, the uh, oxide ion, O negative 2? Normally has 8, got 2 extras for a total of 10. Okay. And hey, let's throw neon in the mix. OK, neon. Neon has 10. Now there's no uh, there's no charge, no charge. So you have to play the game. Right. So all of these have the same electron configuration as neon, and they all have ten electrons. So we call them isoelectronic. But the difference with these atoms is they have different numbers of protons. Right. So since they have different number of protons but the same number of electrons, they're going to have different sizes. So if we go back to that table, and we compare the ones we were just looking at, the sodium and magnesium and oxygen and fluorine, the one that has the least number of protons is the biggest. And why would that be, Mr. Bergman? That would be because, of course, it has the least number of protons. So it's the, the, there's less babysitters holding on to the 10 kids. Right. And the smallest one would be, of course, the magnesium, magnesium. because he's got the most babysitters hanging on to the, the same number kids. of kids. Right, exactly. Or we could even go one more step further. Yep. Aluminum is even smaller. We now have 11. Yeah. Yeah, 11. Yep. 11 babysitters holding on. No, not 11. 13 babysitters 13, yeah. holding on to 10 kids. And we're so good at counting. Yeah, we're really good at that. That's why we do science. All right, rank the following order from smallest to largest. I think we just did. These are the ones we just did. Those are the ones we just did. So let's go back and rank those. Yep. Um, so who would be the, who'd be the uh, smallest, smallest to largest? Smallest would be magnesium. So magnesium, because he's got the most positive most charge. Positive, then sodium. So he'd be number one. Yep. And sodium would be number two. And then neon. Yeah, he'd be number three. And then fluorine and then oxygen. Four. And then five. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's it. All right. So. Um, so, Mr. Sams, I think we're done. Pretty quick little podcast. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Not too bad. So um, we'll see everybody in uh, in the Internet land and uh, or a class, whatever it might be. Perhaps. So we will see you all. Have a good day. Remember to share. Share. Where's your tape? Just don't put it on me. Don't. Oh, there you go. Not me. What